Hello, hello, everyone. Super, super excited to be here. Thank you so much for joining this session. So before we actually start the session, I want to see where people come from, where people actually join us from. So, and this is a kind of a social experiment. I want to also figure out if you if you manage to find where is the chat and 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 how to how to talk to the presenter. So, let's let's see where the folks are from. I'm joining. Uh, obviously from Boston, sunny Boston. I, I never knew I'll say this about the Boston. So let's see. Oh, we have Wisconsin. Where do you guys come from? Dallas, yeah. I'm re really, really exciting. Uh, Toronto is here, so we're, we're going global. So super, super excited about this. Thank you so much for joining, uh, for joining this session. Um, it's really, really, really uh, glad to be part of this community and, and share with you uh, about our workflow automation integration strategy and some of the product investments. So my name is Gev, uh, Gev of Sekan. I'm, I'm, uh, I do product management here. I started my journey at QuickBase uh, about uh, four years ago. Actually, I started my journey as a product manager. I worked on security and governance area of the product. And, 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 and throughout the past four years, I managed to uh, kind of jump around and focus on other areas like uh, workflow automation integration. And most recently, I was also involved in um, uh, the, the integration or the acquisition of cloud pipes and the integration of that technology into our quick base ecosystem, the pipeline technology. So we're gonna be talking a lot about, about that today. So really, really excited. So before uh, we go into the content, uh, I've been told by my legal team uh, to have the safe harbor slide. The content that we're providing today is for informational purposes and is subject to change. There are future looking uh, roadmap items here and, and as, 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 as you can expect in the technology field uh, can and do change. Uh, so just want to make sure uh, we are, we're aligned on that. So what we are going to cover today is primary three things. So we're gonna talk a little bit about our company and product strategy. We're gonna do a high level overview because I want to make sure we, we set the stage and we understand all together as a community why, this, why does this matter and why it is important to, to all of us. Um, then I'm gonna take a click down and, and talk a little bit about Okay, now that we understand all together what's our company strategy and why this is important, what what are the key investments that we're making uh, uh, around automation integration area of the product, right? So very, very brief, high-level themes that uh, I want to make sure we're all aligned on. And then the rest of the presentation will be focusing on product investments for 2021 and beyond. And I'll try to do my best to articulate uh, you know, the, the investments as, as detailed as possible. And we also have a couple of demo videos throughout the presentation uh, that, I'll, that I'll share with you. So I'm gonna try to do my best to focus not more than like five to eight minutes on the first two bullet points, because we heard the content uh, in during the keynote presentations. Uh, I just want to reiterate on that and, and make sure we're aligned. And the most of the time will be focused on product investments for 2021 and beyond. Perfect. So uh, let's let's uh, let's start the journey. Let's talk about our, our product strategy uh, at the very high level. I'm sure uh, the, the the this visual is 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 very familiar. We've been sharing this broadly uh, for a couple of months now. Um, as I said, I've been at QuickBase for about four years, and I managed to meet uh, many, many community members, many, many builders, many, many end users throughout my four years. And in fact, I'm actually uh, scrolling the, the the list of attendees right now, and I see a lot of uh, familiar names uh, that I work with with personally, right? And throughout all this this journey and and during the engagement, I always try to understand. Why? Why you folks like QuickBase? Why? Why does QuickBase matter to you so much? And and throughout all of these conversations, what I learned is that QuickBase empowers you 
to solve the business problems you have. Um, and, and, and as a person who's closer to work, you really know what's beneficial for you, for your organization, and what are the processes and how exactly they, they should look like, right? And so effectively what, what QuickBase does for you, it unlocks the potential that you have in, in you, that you have in your organization and you have in your company. And that's really our purpose. That's why we exist. And we, we, we try to deliver our purpose. We try to deliver our, our, our premise to you through the operational agility solution, which is, which is the technology that we provide as well as the, the expertise that we provide that empowers you as a builder, as an end user to, uh, kind of to, to, to build applications that deliver you an insight and automation that ultimately help you to optimize or or uh, streamline your your operational processes but most importantly it really helps you to innovate the or, or accelerate your digital innovation right that's that's really important i think to uh for for uh for us as a company and for us as a, as a community and on the product side we fundamentally believe that in order for us to deliver our, our promise to you, we need to focus on four things, and we do focus on four things. That's the creator. We need to continuously simplify our upbuilding experience and empower you to solve more and more complex problems every day. Right? That's the insight. We need to make sure that the solutions you build, they leverage the data you have to build the insights and 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 use your data to come up with actions that help your organization to get better. I, and, and, and in order for you to have those insights, you need to have access to the data that is likely spread across all of your enterprise, right? QuickBase isn't the only solution, only technology in your enterprise. There are many different softwares, many different technologies that you have access to. And it is important for you to know that your your insights come from all of the data that you have. Uh, and hence the reason being connected or having a connected solution is, is, is so important. And then finally, all these three things need to be done in a safe and secure way so that you as a builder know that that the, the, the experiments that you have or the improvements you are trying to make, the solutions you are trying to deploy, they all comply with your organization defined policies and they are and they are safe. In other words, you want to make sure that your organization as well as QuickBase got your back when you are trying to, to innovate. So unfortunately today, I'm not gonna be able to cover all of the four uh, uh, and, and there are a lot of sessions that we have at Empower that touch creator insights and governance topics. So today, we're going to focus on the connections and we're going to think, uh, uh, learn together what are, what are the, some of the key priorities we have in this, in this domain. So that's very, very briefly about our company strategy uh, and, and, and why the connection is, is important to, to us as a community. And then uh, let's 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 think about what what are the key investments that we're making for 2021 and uh, beyond for for this domain specifically for workflow automation integration domain. So there are two two key uh, investments that that we have going on uh, in the R and D department. So the first, uh, you most of you I'm sure already know that we. Uh, at QuickBase, we've been always in, uh, in innovating in the workflow automation integration space. And the uh, example of those innovations and the capabilities that we delivered to you are things like webhooks. We delivered action. We delivered automation. So we always been pushing the the boundaries in terms of what citizen developers or people that don't have no that don't have technical background can do with these powerful automation capabilities. So. And about two years ago, we also announced the, 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 the acquisition of strategic technology called Cloud Pipes, which as I mentioned earlier in the, in the presentation, we integrated with, with QuickBase. 
as a as a strategic addition as a strategic technology to our ecosystem and we delivered the pipeline capability to you so and now uh, the the key strategic initiative we have is to continue investing in that technology to make it better every day right even during the the acquisition or when we first announced we we told the community there's there's going to be so much investment in this area, so much improvement opportunities, and so much innovation opportunities that we have. So we need to continuously innovate in that. We've been doing that in the past uh, two years. We're going to continue doing that going forward for 2021 and beyond, and we'll learn together what are type of investments we're making in this domain. And then the second uh, uh, pillar for, 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 for the investment for us is to start thinking about how do we provide a unified, consolidated workflow automation integration technology or application building and, and monitoring experience to you all so that you can not only build automation in a context of your application, but you can build it in the context of your app ecosystems, as well as in the context of your quick base platform and your enterprise systems, and be able to have a unified experience when it comes down to governance, when it comes down to monitoring the usage, when it comes down to understanding how the ecosystem, parts of the ecosystems talk to each other. So that unified experience is incredibly important for uh, delivering scal scalable and repeatable workflow automation integration across all of your applications. So that's the that's the second investment area that we're going to be talking about um, uh, uh, today. So, so hopefully. We, we summarized uh, and, and aligned on the company strategy at the high level and what are the key investment pillars we have for automation integration technology. So let's spend the rest of the time together to learn uh, about the product investments for 2021 and, and beyond. So the rest of the presentation will be structured the, the way I just presented our strategic investment pillars. So we're going to start from accelerating uh, our innovation in, in, in pipelines. So, but before I talk about how we are going to accelerate, I want to talk a little bit about why we need to accelerate this. And the reason we need to accelerate this is, is you, you all. Because when we deliver the technology to market, we've seen tremendous adoption of the technology, right? Uh, so year over year growth, 70X. We today have 43 million step runs performed in month of April, and we are growing roughly about 100 to 120% month over month in terms of the usage growth. We have over 1,100 uh, customers using this platform, which is growing month over month consistently, right? So a lot of you adopted the technology, a lot of you used it to, to derive business value, to solve your business problems, as well as a lot of you talked to us, spoke to us, uh, shared your, what are the areas that we need to work on, improve on, so that you can continue adopting the technology and gaining more and more value out of it. So. It's exactly why it's important for us to accelerate because you are adopting the technology and you want the technology to get better and to address more and more use cases that you have. So, so what did you tell us as a community? So the, the, after, after hearing many feedback and spending many, many hours with, with you all, what we learned is that there are three key things that are important for our community from uh, uh, for, for pipelines, for our pipelines capability. So the first and foremost, all of you ask us to invest and continue our investments and even accelerate our investments around scale and performance because you want to have faster and faster and faster pipelines every day. So the second thing you communicated with us is that you want to have even better builder and administration experience, right? Uh, and, and that's 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 going to be a, a huge investment area for us going forward. 
And then last but not least, you have many different systems in your enterprise and you want us to continually invest in developing new channels that will enable you to integrate with integrate QuickBase with your with your enterprise ecosystem in a very easy and streamlined way. And those are going to be the focuses that we have uh, for 2021 going forward. And we're going to learn, you know, one by one about each of these investment domains. So first, let's talk about scale and performance. Incredibly important area uh, for us. Is we're going to continuously invest in this. Uh, before I, I, I talk about the, the numbers, I want to share a little bit about how pipeline works so that we uh, we, we all align on, on the technology at the, at the back end, as well as the investments we're making to make it more scalable and more performance. And so I'm sure you've all been in a grocery store, right? And when you're in a grocery store, you come to, a, a, to the, the, the checkout point, you normally have like multiple checkout points and you have like uh, people there that scan your, 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 uh, 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 goods that you buy, and then you know everyone goes through the same point, right? There, there are multiple checkout points. So, if you think and visualize that experience, our, our pipeline technology works in a very similar way, right? So, what we have in the pipeline, we have the, the technology that we call App Engine, which is effectively your checkout point, and there are many, many, many checkout points in the pipeline infrastructure that are responsible for running your automation logic. And then every time you, you trigger a logic that sends, that, that, that sends almost that customer to a checkout point or that sends that automation logic to a checkout point for the execution that is done by the app engine or done by the checkout point in the, in the grocery store. So then in order for all of that to work, uh, we need to build the specific technology for 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 uh, us to kind of facilitate that process. So I'm sure you went. Sometimes you go to your grocery store, and there there are no lines. You just go right into the checkout point. You check out. You pay. You move on. Right? There was no one on the line. But there are some times where you have many people on the line, and there are sometimes multiple lines for the checkout points, depending on on the hour. So pipeline works exactly the same way. In our technology, we have multiple lines for the checkouts for your automation logic, and then we have multiple checkout uh, points that effectively run your, your logic. So throughout the past year, we've made significant progress on the scale and performance. So the first thing we've done when we delivered the technology to market to you, we had only a single line for those checkout points. So what we've done first is we deployed multiple lines for, for the checkout, meaning like we built number of queues that effectively take all the load coming from all of you and that distributes across many, many uh, app engines or many, many uh, uh, checkout points in the grocery store. Right, so that's that number one thing we did. And we're gonna continuously invest in that and we're gonna uh, continuously add lines as well as we're gonna invest in the technology that uh, very intelligently distribute the lot across different lines so that there isn't a, a, a checkout point that doesn't have a customer to, to work on. So that's number one. Number two, we're gonna, we are also investing, and this is actually in a slow rollout mode already, uh, we're investing in a new technology, in a new almost checkout station that is gonna run your workflow automations faster, right? And we call this Blaze Engine. So imagine if we were in a grocery, we're gonna replace the legacy checkout points with the new modern touchscreen uh, technology that runs your automations faster. So this Blaze engine, we already built the technology and throughout the next couple of months, you're gonna see us slowly roll this out and your pipelines are gonna get faster and faster, right? So these two investments are really critical for us uh, 
to to increase the scale and the performance of the of the of the system and those are investments that we started a year ago and we're going to continuously invest in this and then in the next couple of months you will see the deployment of the new infrastructure pieces that will make your pipelines haul a lot faster and i'm sure a lot of you are are excited about this improvements coming uh, coming out So that's about the scale and, and, and the performance of, of, of the technology. The second thing uh, that we had on the, on the key investment areas is world-class builder and admin experience. So many of you used pipelines and many of you shared a lot of feedback about things that can be improved in the pipeline eco ecosystem. So first and foremost, you know, simple things like drag and drop interface. Can I use a very easy to use drag and drop to restructure my pipelines to to organize my logic? Right. That's that's really the modern and the scalable user experience. Or another another thing that most of you brought to our attention is, hey, I built my pipeline, but I want to collaborate with other builders. I want to be able to share my pipeline, collaborate together to build my logic. So. I want to have that 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 experience as well, right? And that's all about us investing in modern and scalable user experience that enables a simple drag and drop, as well as enables collaboration across many different builders. Uh, 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 will it be in a single organization or across your IT and 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 line of business? So that's number one focus area. So number two, we also heard from you that. When I'm building my pipeline, I want to have a better debugging experience, meaning that I'm, I'm, I'm in a process of developing a logic. I want to be able to run the logic once and try to debug it, like what, what each step does, what is the output of each step, and what is the, what, what that, and, and how it becomes an input to the next step, and is my logic being executed appropriately or as I was intending it to do, right? And then once you do all the development and debugging, then you would want to have, or you do want to have, uh, uh, the more proactive runtime monitoring of your pipeline. In other words, hey, once I'm built, I deployed my pipeline, everything works perfectly. How can I configure my pipeline in a way so that I proactively get notified there, there, there might be something wrong. I don't know. The, the payload size was larger than than the platform supported, or you know, I integrated my QuickBase with Salesforce, and Salesforce isn't available, right? Salesforce is down, or there is a network timeout, right? How do I get as a builder? How do I get notified about those incidents so that I can address them uh, very quickly? So that's about the active monitoring of. of of, of pipelines, and it's incredibly important, important investment area uh, that we are we're going to focus on. And then, last but certainly uh, not least, is the unified governance of pipeline. As you know, when we delivered the technology to you, we uh, focused a lot upfront to integrate the technology into our admin console and give you ability to not only configure the user permissions for pipeline in terms of like who can build pipelines, who can't, but also like which channels, which integration channels are uh, uh, for your organization. Uh, but that's that was just the starting point. We have so many improvement opportunities in this area and we are thinking about investments that will help you to configure things like you know, I want to be able to say, I enabled box in my account. Which box endpoint is compliant or which uh, box endpoint is allowed in my organization? So that, for example, I don't know, my builders or, or, or whoever has access to pipeline doesn't take the information from QuickBase to uh, a private box account, as an example. Or can I enable channels for each user separately. For example, give 
you just need access to Salesforce. Uh, I enabled you access to Salesforce channel versus some other builder in your in my company may need access to team Microsoft Teams, so I'll enable that access for that specific person. So can I do that level of granularity in terms of permissions? So those are the type of investments that we'll be making and, and, and that will be done in the admin console so that we empower our realm administrators to configure pipeline and the permission and the, and the endpoints uh, for the integration from admin console that can that then will be applied to all of the build, builder community and will be in the centralized location. So that's that's the investment around governance uh, and specifically around admin console. So you 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 were I'm sure you all joined our keynote and you learned about my pipelines page and my pipelines page is just the beginning of the journey, right? There was the starting point for us to build more modern experience uh, for uh, managing your, your pipelines in a single page with simple things like tagging your, your pipelines or seeing the usage of your each, each of your pipelines. So that's just the beginning of the journey. So you're gonna see us make improvements in, throughout uh, the, the entire entire platform, right? So this, uh, the announcing just pipeline page is just demonstration of the, the start of the journey. Um, last but certainly not least on the list was wide range of integration channels. And I like to spend about like five minutes talking about some of the key priorities we're gonna be focusing on here. So as you know, we, we, we Effectively, pipelines, the technology is an integration, workflow automation integration technology on its own. But we have no intention for pipelines to have thousands and thousands of channels in terms of integration, right? We are not competing in, a, in, a, in, an, in an iPaaS space. We are not competing in terms of number of channels we build and release to our marketplace. What we are doing is we are strategically focusing on integration capabilities that will empower you to solve your operational agility problems, to solve your problems um, for your organization. And from all of you, we heard that there are four key domains of investments that, that uh, you like us to make. So the first thing we heard is you want the ability to integrate uh, quick base through pipelines with your tier one systems. Think about this as your ERP systems like Oracle, like SAP systems or, or ServiceNow uh, of the world. So uh, we're gonna be focusing on wide range of channels that allow you to simplify the, the, the integration. So as an example, we started we started effort uh, internally focusing on SAP integration and we are exploring a, an opportunity to have object by object integration with SAP using one of their integration protocols, which, which is called OData, right? We're gonna deliver this, this tier one integrations uh, one by one, excuse me. I probably noticed I have a quick base swag as well. So that's number one priority. The second is uh, we understand that there are many, many systems in your enterprise that we may not have channels uh, to integrate with in terms of like native, dr native drag and drop uh, experience. And hence the reason that we are prioritizing also generic integration capabilities. And these are things like making improvements uh, to how we uh, integrate using webhook channel, Web, using JSON handler, using CSV handler, uh, building capabilities around, as I said, like all data, building capabilities around SFTP support. So these are uh, an integration capabilities that don't necessarily uh, imply that you, you can integrate with this specific system, but rather they can be applied to many different systems as long as you have, you have the you have a way to, to leverage them. For example, JSON handler, if you have a system that has JSON APIs 
and you want to integrate with that, it will enable you to do that. It does right now, but for example, we need to support, uh, let's say, OAuth workflow or the specific authentication workflow uh, um, in that in our JSON handler. So we'll be making that type of investments to uh, kind of continuously improve those. Uh, the third thing is integration with data science and BI platforms. Um, a lot of you mentioned about the need to have integration uh, with platforms like Tableau, with platforms like Power BI, uh, so that you can extend quick base data to your BI, BI platforms that you already have in, in your enterprise system um, and, and leverage that data to, do, uh, to, to generate some reporting there. Um, and that goes really well with uh, integration with data warehousing solutions as well, right? These are these are the solutions like, you know, you can have data warehousing solution deployed on Amazon S3, or you can have data warehousing solution that leverages Snowflake technology or Google BigQuery or or Azure Blob uh, storage. So these are. Uh, these are the systems where your your enterprise might host all the data, but you as a builder, citizen developer, you may have not have access to that data. So by, by building this integration capabilities, we're gonna empower you to uh, integrate safe in, in safe and secure way to those large data warehouse sources, and then bring the data over to QuickBase to generate the actionable insights that I was talking about earlier in the presentation. And as part of this strategy, earlier uh, earlier uh, uh, during the, the Empower keynote, we announced very exciting uh, uh, capability, which is integration with on-premise systems. This is really important and very strategic improvements uh, improvement for QuickBase ecosystem because a lot of you shared your feedback with us that a lot of data that you need in your day-to-day -day operations resides behind your enterprise firewall or resides in your on-premise legacy systems that you don't have access to, right? I can't highlight how many times I had conversation with our builders where they said, gee, I'm getting this like Excel spreadsheet on a weekly basis that I upload to my QuickBase so that I can generate my reports and do my work because the system that that I, I, I has the data is behind my firewall is a legacy system and there is no way to integrate it. So there is a way to integrate with it. And that's why we built this technology. We built our on-premises agent, uh, which enables you to connect to the data in your on-premises si system and bring it to QuickBase and enable you to build that actionable insight. So uh, what, what, what our on-premises agent does, it enables you to connect not only to data sources like databases, but it effectively establishes a, 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 an approach to integrate will with a lot of different on-premise systems. Will that be based on uh, a, a well-known uh, communication protocol like ODBC, or will it be based on just basic HTTP requests? So those are those, that this is really powerful technology and starting from June, we're gonna start slowly rolling out this technology, primarily supporting the, the uh, Microsoft SQL integration with Microsoft SQL service, uh, uh, integration with uh, uh, HTTP services behind your firewall, as well as supporting on-premise applications like Jira. Um, there is a lot more we covered about this during our on-premise on session that we had it yesterday. It's recorded and it's a really great deep dive of what it does and, 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 and how it works. But what I wanted to do is share with you a very quick demo of, the, of this technology. Um, uh, and, and, and in the demonstration, it's gonna be very simple. It's like five minute uh, quick demonstration from actually the session yesterday that demonstrates how you can take the data that you have in your on-premise Microsoft SQL server that a lot of times you get your, your, your CSV exports from this server because you don't actually have access to it, how you can connect to it, bring the 
data to QuickBase in a very easy way, and then uh, automate the entire data uh, moving process as well as the, the reporting process. So you will see a very brief demo and I'll be back. This is the, the QuickBase app that we still need to populate data into. And this is the pipelines interface where we define the pipelines, uh, which are the formal definition of the workflows that you implement. Before we go into the actual pipelines, in order to have a, a connection with on-premise agent, we need to make sure that this feature is enabled and also we need to uh, configure this agent with its uh, security uh, token. So in the settings page, we have a dedicated section on the agent where it can be enabled and disabled. And the particular on-premise agent uh, component is authorized access by using an API token, which you can use, you can get from here. This is a step which is done uh, one time upon the initial installation. Let's see how this looks on the on-premise side. So here we have a, a, a virtual machine, which in this, for this demo resembles a server in the enterprise network. And on this server, it's a Windows server, we have the familiar services uh, panel that shows the local services. And among these services, we can see that we have pipelines agent service, which is running uh, as any other uh, Windows uh, service, which is the typical way how we will implement this on a Windows server. Uh, upon the initial configuration of the service, uh, you need to provide the API token uh, which uh, we saw on the previous screen, and uh, it, it becomes part of the initial setup of this component. Once configured, it, uh, it is part of the uh, service configuration and doesn't need to be dealt with. On the same machine, we have uh, the Microsoft SQL database ser uh, server running as well, and here we have the target database that we want to fetch data from. So for this example, we have a database with an employee table, and this table has the following uh, fields that uh, uh, define the employee data. So let's see how these data will be accessed from a pipeline in order to uh, import these data into, into the QuickBase application. So for this case, we have a pipeline that does initial full synchronization from the on-premise uh, Microsoft SQL Server database to the QuickBase app. So here is how this is done. We are able to search uh, the rows of the uh, SQL Server database using the search rows pipe in the ODBC channel. So here we have the LDPC channel and the available steps for it. So this is the query step. Here we can write uh, SQL and this SQL is written in the dialect of the target database. It is actually executed directly uh, by the on-premise agent against the target database. So if you have, for example, Oracle database, you'll be writing PLSQL here. If you have Microsoft, you'll be writing Microsoft SQL syntax here. The statements here are directly transferred to the database. Here you are able to specify, uh, as usual, the column names which are, which are fetched from the database. So you have direct explicit control which columns are fetched and only the ones which are listed here actually leave the uh, on-premises network. Uh, then we are, uh, we are on the next step, we are preparing a bulk in, uh, import operation that will help us to import the records as a, as a bulk into QuickBase. And in a loop, we are iterating through the results of the query. Here in the body of the loop, we uh, are able to specify and actually manipulate the data coming from the SQL Server database and 
Actually, here we define the mapping between the fields in the SQL database and the fields in the QuickBase app. So here we specify the, the table in QuickBase where we're importing data and the fields in that table on the QuickBase side. And here we specify how the values uh, will be read from the SQL Server database. The language here is uh, is a uh, uh, like a formula language, which is called Jinja, and it allows a lot of flexibility and power in data modification. For example, if you notice in the on the SQL side, we have a single column, which is the employee name. However, the QuickBase app has two fields for first name and for last name. And here, using the Jinja template language, which is uh, like a dialect of Python, uh, we can perform, uh, for example, splitting of the employee name to first name and last name. Uh, we uh, have a whole um, um, uh, section on this Empower, uh, a great tutorial on the Jinja capabilities of the uh, Jinja language. So I encourage you to take a look at this uh, Empower session, uh, which is called uh, Becoming a Jinja Ninja. Uh, a lot of power uh, is achievable through this language. So uh, here, you, that's how we define the mapping of the data. And eventually, we uh, commit uh, an absurd operation, which means that we either update the data in QuickBase in the QuickBase table, or we insert new records. Now I'm going to run this pipeline so that we'll see how it actually will read the data. Uh, from, uh, from the SQL Server database and import it into, into QuickBase. Here we see the audit record that show uh, the execution of the individual steps, and we can see that eventually the pipeline completed. So now if we come back here and refresh this page, we'll see how the data uh, from the uh, SQL Server arrived into the QuickBase application based on the conversion uh, which uh, you saw in the, in the pipeline. Awesome. Um, I know it's, it's it, the, 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 the demo for on-premise agent uh, was was likely a little bit more on the technical side, but I wanted to 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 have this to demonstrate how you can partner with your IT peers, with your technical stakeholders to deploy our on-premise agent, and 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 how it can simplify the entire data move uh, from your on-premise environment to QuickBase for you in the pipelines pipeline uh, interface. So, um, the, the, the next thing I want to uh, quickly touch on is, is unifying our, our automation and integration stack. Um, uh, you all remember, hopefully, that back in the day when we announced the, 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 the strategic acquisition of cloud pipes and delivering uh, the pipelines technology, we mentioned that we aspire to get to a world where we provide you a unified workflow automation integration experience from development as well as the governance perspective so that you have a single environment to build and collaborate uh, 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 on for, for your automation needs as well as uh, you have a single unified environment and unified platform from a governance and, and, and configuration standpoint. And then throughout this conversation as we were as we were uh, kind of thinking about improvement opportunities in pipeline, thinking about the, the strategic investments we're making it there. Uh, we announced like 50% uh, R&D budget increase, and there's gonna be a lot of that gonna be focused on investments in pipeline. Throughout all the conversations, our, our, our customers been, been been asking me, myself personally, and, and our team members around like, gee, okay, if, if, if this is this is the investments you are making and, and, it, and it looks so promising and uh, you guys are focusing on this technology, how can I have my, my uh, kind of the, the legacy technology move into this new new technology that is such such a strategic investments for you? 
Um, and after hearing a lot of a lot of feedback around that, we uh, at QuickBase uh, decided to build a technology that is aligned with our no-code philosophy and empowers you to move your automations to pipelines. This is specifically for automations with a click of a button. Right? Because a lot of you mentioned that I wish I could, I, I did have time to move my automations to pipelines. I don't, but you folks are investing in pipelines. I want to take advantage of that. I want to get the value out of that. How do we do that? Well, we were, we're simplifying that experience for you. And starting uh, from June, you're gonna have a, a new technology delivered to you that will help you to move your automations to pipelines with the click of a button. And I will uh, share with you a short teaser video how uh, it's, it's, it's gonna work. You can use migration to copy your existing QuickBase automations to pipelines. Let's get started. We're starting at the automations page. You'll notice that we have automations in different states of migration. Migrated means that this automation has already been migrated. Analyzed means that this automation has been analyzed but not yet migrated. Start migration means that nothing has started yet for this automation. If there were any problems during the process, they would be marked as analysis error or migration error. Each migration has a unique ID, so you can refer to it if you ever need to talk to a QuickBase representative. Let's try a simple migration. We click on the Start Migration link. The migration dialog opens and an analysis of the automation begins. The migration checks to see if there is anything that would make this less than successful. For example, if we didn't have access to pipelines, or there was something unusual in the structure of our automation. In this case, our automation checks out so we can begin the migration. The migration was successful. Our automation has been copied to pipelines. Your existing automation is retained, so don't forget to deactivate it when you are working with your pipeline. The migration process doesn't delete or deactivate your automation. That's up to you. Now let's look at the new pipeline. Here it is. We have tagged the pipelines and the description also contains the automation ID in case you need to reference it easily later. So, as, as I said, uh, a very short teaser video, how we're going to enable you to move your automations to pipeline if you choose to do so. Uh, and I think that the important thing that I want to highlight here before I wrap up is that the teams have, we have analyzed over 140,000 automations in our platform. And the team came up with the strategy that uh, we focusing on covering the, the all the use cases in our automation to pipeline conversion tool over time. So in June, we're gonna deliver this to you and happy to let you know that the initial version will be co will cover over 50% of automation use cases. And then throughout the rest of the year, we're gonna continue our investment in this area. And at end of the year, we're very confident that we'll have over 90% coverage for all automation use cases uh, that you can just move to pipelines with the click of a button. Very important investment area because we heard from a lot of you uh, to that 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 you want to leverage pipelines more and more. So with this, uh, uh, that's that's uh, covers the agenda. So uh, just to wrap up, we we spoke about the company uh, and the product strategy at the very high level. We spoke about the investment 
uh, areas for the automation integration strategy and we reviewed uh, together some of the key product investments we're making both on the the pipeline side to make pipelines uh, 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 a great product every day, as well as how we're we're uh, working towards enabling you to have unified, consolidated workflow automation integration platform. That summarizes my uh, my speech. Uh, I'm sure there's a there's a huge energy in the in the audience that unfortunately I can't see. Uh, uh, if there is, maybe I can see it in the comments. But let's let's uh, review uh, some of the questions. Uh, I'm, well, there, there is actually one question from from Laura about me playing a guitar. Unfortunately, I'm actually not talented at all. Um, uh, I, I I think my talent uh, is mostly around building PowerPoints. So um, that's 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 kind of the limits I have there. So uh, let me take a, a quick look at uh, some of the questions um, out there for you folks. Uh, okay, so there, there was a, a question about the, the individual uh, steps, like whether there will be as part of the debugging effort, whether there will be uh, we will be focusing on capability to run each step separately. As I mentioned in my answer, uh, I'm, I'm not sure if that's visible for everyone, but I mentioned in my answer that we actually, around all the investment areas that I highlighted, uh, we we were, we launched uh, an experience research, user experience research. So all of those are are strong consideration in the in the scope of the research. I shared my email in the chat. If you if you would like to participate in the research and influence like what we focus on next and, and how we, we we choose to solve it, our our ears are wide open. We we would like to partner with you. In fact, you are the ones who help us build better products. Will ODBC connector be beta or GA this summer? Uh, we actually did run um, uh, a, a beta program uh, for the for the ODBC uh, already, so uh, we are going to deliver this to GA general availability, uh, focusing on the scope that I that I mentioned with the ODBC channel. Okay, this is John Karras. Uh, hopefully, folks can hear me. Uh, I'm trying to get to as many questions as I can with resources and links and help, but. Um, you know, please feel free to reach out to us as well after if we uh, run out of time, but um, I'm here to help with questions as well. Okay, I have a question from my friend Adam. Will we be able to copy an existing automation with the automations intact so that we can test the migrated pipeline against non-production applications? So that's a, that's a fantastic question, uh, uh, Adam. So I think um, so currently we have, we, we don't have in the scope of copying automation, uh, but the way we thought about this is with the conversion tool, you will be able to uh, migrate your automations to pipeline. And then in a pipeline environment, you can copy your pipelines and point to a copied application and test the logic that way. Right, so if you copy your application, your automations aren't going to be copied, unfortunately. But if you migrate your your uh, uh, if you migrate your automation to pipeline, you can copy your pipeline and test that logic against the copied version of the application. Um, so hopefully that 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 helps you to to kind of understand how you can accomplish the use case, which I think we discussed offline many, many times. Uh, but if not, you you know where to find me. Uh, so more than happy to do a deep dive on that together. When should we migrate an existing automation to pipeline with the conversion tool? Conversion tool is gonna be available to you uh, uh, by the end of June. 
uh, the conversion tool is going to be covering a, a little bit over 50% of the use cases. It won't have 100% coverage in the initial release. So what you are going to be able to do from June release on, you can analyze your automation and the tool will tell you whether that particular automation is compliant uh, or is covered by the tool so that you can um, move it with the click of a button. If it's not, then uh, we're going to provide you a central hub where we're going to constantly update what's the scope of the migration tool at that given month so that you can learn where you can do it. Our goal is to have uh, over 90% coverage by end of the year. So if this is something uh, you, 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 you have a, as, as an objective that you can start moving your automations as soon as end of June, parts of them, and then you will have more coverage uh, closer to end of the year. And obviously we're gonna make releases throughout the, the rest of the year. So it's not gonna be wait until December and one big thing happens. So you will see updates every month. When we'll have to able to collaborate on, on the same pipeline. If it was me, I would say we should have had that yesterday. So this is this capability is being asked so much. It's perhaps one of the one of the big reasons why the adoption is not, you know, thousand percent month over month, but it's only over hundred percent. I think uh, our our research, I research is in progress. I won't be surprised if this ends up being one of the top priorities, which then the team will be. Uh, immediately focusing on, uh, obviously, as, as they prioritize it. Uh, important to highlight that all the incremental investments that we, we announced, part of that will be focused on investments in this area, uh, governance area, user experience area. So you should expect updates, uh, uh, you know, regularly on this these areas that we discussed. And. Hey, this is John Karras. Uh, John Crossland, I see your question here about the, the pricing model and how, you know, isn't that all based on data coming into QuickBase is not billable and data coming out of QuickBase is billable? Um, you're precisely right. And due to the nature of the ODBC channel, right, we are not going to be reading your SQL statements. Um, that, that feels like a little bit of an invasion. So we can't actually decipher if you're moving data in and out. And ultimately, the search rows step which is uh, probably one of the most powerful ones is really going to be able to get you information in bulk. And when you use that, right, if you get 5,000 records from your database, it's not going to come out as 5,000 steps, right? That's going to come out as one step. So when we were deciding on that pricing model of how we would count those um, steps, we made a, a decision to say, hey, we're going to let our customers um, be able to use these steps. And if they're using it the proper ways, right, we're act active, you know, getting bulk data and then processing it however they want after. And um, again, as I alluded to, if you process that information with QuickBase steps, you know, update record in QuickBase, those are going to continue to be free. So um, that's kind of how we've thought about it because uh, we really didn't want to start reading customers' SQL statements. Uh, it felt like a little bit of an invasion. Thank you, John. I think we discussed all all the questions. Um, you obviously, all of you know where to find me. You have my email address already. I, I posted in there. You can find me in the community Slack channel, uh, uh, and I'm gonna be uh, hanging out at the booth as well. So feel free to to drop and and ask any follow up questions you have. If you want to see my face next year, you might want to also rate the session. Uh, uh, right, right, right after after we end. But really appreciate your time, and really appreciate all of you. Uh, really uh, uh, humble to be part of this community and work with all of you to build better product for all of us. So thank you so much uh, for for your time and for your attention.